We are here today with Eric Martin from Mr. Big. And Eric, I've been a fan of yours for quite a long time. And it's nice to actually, I love these Zoom call interviews now because I can actually see the person as well as yeah. hear them. So technology, pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I mean, maybe back in the day, we just look like we look terrible. Well, back know. in the day, yeah, you, you could just be on the phone and you could be anywhere and I wouldn't know it. <laughs> I, I could be anywhere on the road with Mr. Big with no shower. So maybe it was a good thing. Yeah, true. Like yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you didn't have to worry about it. But Eric, thank you. I appreciate it. I know you just mentioned off the air that uh, today's the first day of your vacation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. You want me to tell you the whole thing in a nutshell? Again? Yeah. Give me a quick little nutshell for the listeners. Okay. okay so two weeks ago, two weeks and change we we uh mr big or the biggles is like i like to call them on the off season um played our last show in the usa in buffalo new york billy sheehan's uh, hometown Woo-hoo! oh the crowd went wild it was pretty amazing i you know i mean i'm, I'm looking at him just soaking it in you know it's his hometown it was it, it was a really good show so that was uh you know, two and a half weeks ago. And then those guys went on to barbecue and vacation and do their thing. And like I was telling you, and I'm not afraid to tell you again, that Billy Sheehan, you know, he's, if you, if you go by Facebook, he's probably cooking, uh, you know, like he has a little, it seems like he's at, has a cooking show during the COVID years. I would go on the page and, just, you know, find out what he's doing and he'd be cooking with like a lot of wine. I'm just saying, you didn't hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he'd always go like this he goes well just a little wine and then probably off camera <laughs> anyway <laughs> um and then i went to los angeles and started a uh, uh to work on a, a, a recording project for the japanese this uh 20 years ago i was in a band it was called tak matsumoto group tmg for short and it was me jack blades from night ranger chris frazier from foreigner Tuck wanted to have like an American rock and roll band feel for a new record. He's a legendary guitar player in Japan. 90 million records type of legendary wow. guy. Yeah, huge. And so we did 20 sold out shows. It went platinum, sold out, great stuff. But that was 20 years ago. And Tuck, you know, after uh, me, you know, I'm asking him, every year for 20 years hey we got to do this again it was so great and lucrative and what you know wonderful uh, experience and he goes let me think about it so 20 years later that's um that's what i did and i'm uh i, I did the recording project it was me jack blades and this time matt sorum from okay. guns and roses who man you know i know that guy was good i knew that guy was good but He's really good. I mean, a great drummer, snappy dresser. I've yeah. seen him in multiple projects. Obviously, he was in the cult for a little bit. And yeah. uh, I think he was in a band out of L.A. that was just a bunch of big musicians back in the 2000, Camp Freddy, where they'd Camp all Allen, get together yeah. and jam. Oh, yeah, it was cool. at a station in Vegas. We hired him one time. And every time I looked up on stage, it was somebody else that just happened to be in town jamming with him. It was Yeah, that guy's, he's played with a lot of people. Obviously, GNR, Velvet Revolver. And like you said, the cult, a lot of, a lot of, everybody knows him, yeah. but on the project that we did, and I'm, uh, I'm singing all these vocals going, wow, Jack, this guy played, I, I wasn't there when he, when he tracked, but uh, yeah, he played great. So we're going to do a tour after the upcoming Mr. Big tour. So I got, the, you know, today's, or yesterday was the official uh, Eric Martin vacation and I've done nothing <laughs> except fight back allergies and bloody noses and you know a couple beers and cook for my kids and not in that order I think no. I <laughs> oh the kids okay and, uh, <laughs> but, so um yeah so uh, the new Mr. Big album it's going to be out uh, what, July 12th uh yeah and it's called 10, 10. 10 so, ob- so obviously your 10th album um <laughs> <laughs> clever <laughs> Clever name, huh? I, I, you put a lot of thought into that, didn't you? Oh, my God. I don't know if I told you this, but it took longer to come up with a title and an album cover than it did to write the songs. Wow. Oh, my God. I, if the band wasn't already dissolving on August 23rd, we'd probably have broke up from it. 
<laughs> oh, it was a nightmare trying to everybody go. And me too. I mean, I Paul would be, he went to, um, uh, what's, what's the thing on you know, Library of Congress, um, Statue of Limitations, you, you, you can find photos. Oh, uh, and and material. Well, I'm I'm, I'm hot here. It's, it, Northern California is a little scorchy. Uh, I'm sure Tucson is too. But anyway, uh, you can go on the Library of Congress, and uh, it, I forgot what it's called. I want to say Statue of Limitations, but it's like oh, the when the copyright expires yeah, and, be and becomes could, open to public or something. Or... Yeah, and you can use it for free. So he found all these pictures, but all the. And he would doctor it up with the Photoshop, but all the pictures started coming back with like a sepia tone or a black and white photo with a red Mr. Big. I'm like, that kind of looks like lean into it, son. I don't know. We kind of already done that. And he goes, yeah, but playing like doing like an homage to lean into it. I'm like, I don't know. And I, I kept saying, no, no, no. And other people would throw in their two cents. And I did say no, no, no a lot, but I think out of frustration, and frustration from the whole band. I don't know why I'm opening this can of worm, <laughs> worms up. I'm totally going to get shite for it. But uh, Paul came up with this idea, and it was like be the the rear end of a cow, right? And it was CP tone, and it had the red uh, logo, and it said "In hindsight," right? And <laughs> you know, it's funny, yeah. but like a career killer. I think <laughs> I thought right. <laughs> And he goes, in hindsight, and then out of frustration, even Nick, our, our new drummer, was like, yeah, it's good with me. And Billy's like, yeah, let's use that. And Paul goes, okay, it's settled. And the management goes, okay, what do you got? And I go, oh, trust me, Tim, you don't want to see this. Oh, it's showing. And he goes, have you guys lost your damn mind? Fine, okay, we'll use it. And I'm like, oh, please, God, no. And then I found a photo, and it kind of looked like a United... Uh, colors of Benetton uh, thing. It was, it was a, it was a one of those, you know, Library of Congress things. It was a sky blue, uh, clouds and everything, and then it had these two hands, and it had like the map, like a current map, like Brazil and um, United States on it, and all the stuff. And I got, I thought that was really cool looking, but I just didn't like the bright ass colors. So I gave it to our uh, art director, Larry Fremantle. We used to work for Atlantic Records. He's done all our album covers. He's he's just a he's a genius guy. Comes he's just, you know he's got that humor like we do. Uh, we couldn't even think. But Paul thought of a good pun with in hindsight. But the cow thing <laughs> it's on that. And so he came up with this ten thing. And you know the more I look at it, the more I like it now. But I'm telling you the story behind this. And it, when I'm holding this up, uh, folks at home, the album cover kind of looks like this with the, the hands. And then it doesn't have a current map. It has like some old Latin, you know, 1500s looking. Oh, wow. Yeah. Magellan painted or I don't, not Magellan, but you know what I mean. So in the band right now, it's you, Paul, Billy, and then you got a new drummer. And that guy, he was in a prog rock band. Yeah. And I knew of him. His name is Nick DeVirgilio, and he plays in a band called Spock. He played in a band called Spock's Beard. Oh, mm -hmm. I've heard of them. Mm -hmm. And great, great name. But Paul used to talk about this band all the time. Another guy who was in that band, Neil Morris, I think his name was. But um, And I never really heard him. I was like, I'm not crazy on the prog world. Sorry, everybody. I mean, I was, when I was younger, I liked Yes and Genesis and that old the old prog stuff and uh but i'm not hip to the the new regime look at me mm -hmm. this is my hip uh, trying to be hip kind of dance so uh and then paul said that he played on uh, some tracks that nick played some tracks on paul's records and there was no real audition we listened to spock's beard and we listened to uh what he did for paul and we're like oh man and the, and i saw the guy at do some podcast because he he does he's kind of like the drum rep for Sweetwater Music. Okay. You know, in Indiana. And the guy was like very eloquent and really cool and in a weird kind of telepathic way. I don't know. He reminded me of Pat Torpy. 
he he had a uh, I saw him in this picture. He had an L.A. Dodgers hat. Oh wow! And uh, pa Pat was a huge baseball fan. I mean, we'd be driving all over the earth, and and uh, Pat would be in his bunk listening uh, on a little transistor radio the Dodger games, you know. And he was just and he was a baseball player as uh, as well, and he loved Led Zeppelin. Uh, the, similar things to what um, Nick likes. Anyway, it reminded me of him and I really like his demeanor. He's such a nice guy. Boom, you got the job. You got the, you got the third vote. And I, we signed off on him and he's been playing with us for about a year. Okay. And, he, and he's killer. He's killer. And he, and he sings. He's, and that's another thing he can sit. He sings like Pat a little bit. And Pat always reminded me of a Paul McCartney type of voice. And yeah, anyway, wow. getting on. Oh, Anyway. You know, I get you. I get you there. It's it's kind of like it feels like it it was meant to be. It did feel, it, you know? it, and it still feels that way. And and, it, and maybe Pat kind of sent them to you almost. Uh, if you yet, you know. You know, I got to tell you, to get all not to get all weird, but so we played Japan. What a shock! We played China first a year ago, and then we played some other sh Southeast Asian shows, and then we played Japan, and we. Everybody was bringing their families out. My my kids had to; they were going to college, and you know, I was the I was the odd man out on that one. But uh, Billy's wife, uh, Elizabetta, came. Um, Nick's wife, and uh, and then Karen Torpy came. Um, or I'm sorry, Paul's wife and son, and then Karen Torpy, Pat's wife, came with their son, Pat Jr. and she saw Nick and she goes, you know, she gave us our, the blessing, a basic, a, a blessing. I know that seems cliche, you know, you know, it's, we're able to move on, but she went, it's uncanny how much uh, Nick reminds her of her husband, you know, so it, oh, it was really neat. That's really, that's, that's, and, and the band continues, you know, and, and carries on a legacy. Yeah. For a little while. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the new album going to be out July 12th called 10. Uh, we've had the uh, tunes that we've played. Good luck trying up, up on you. And uh, obviously, I haven't heard the whole album yet. I'm looking forward to hearing it all. Yeah. But can you tell us a little bit about the process of putting the new album together and, you know, the inspirations, et cetera? Yeah, it's a, it's more of a mellow. I mean, it still rocks and it still has the Billy Sheehan, Paul Gilbert um, signature sound you know a like lot of a lot of this a lot, a lot of solos and a lot of um really cool billy sheehan and paul gilbert interaction you know the dynamic duo and um and i'm still doing my i'm doing more more bluesy than usual i mean i do it every album that just can't help can't help it on that one well we got our producer um jay rustin who produced Winery Dogs as well, okay. Billy Sheehan's, um, you know, other love, and and he also produced a bunch of bands, even like Steel Panther and stuff like that. Anyway, sonically the guys got it down, and it, we wanted to have that live rock record with no frills and velvet curtains and violins and you know tons of harmonies and t and you know Paul over the years. In the early years, he just played the one guitar and then been a couple, couple of albums in, you know, like maybe the late 90s, 2000s, um, or 2009, actually. They, he started adding a little bit more guitar to make it fat. And this one is just the one guitar, and it's just one bass and the drums, live vocals, uh, no reverb. Thank you. Me and my big mouth. I, I said, please, can we have reverb? Because in my uh, in ears, you know, like little headphones for those people uh, in the uh, in there that don't know. Um, I like to have it like Budokan, you know, like gigantic, big, huge reverb. So it sounds like an old '80s record. And when we discussed the making of the album and how live and raw and unfiltered we wanted it. Jay goes, uh, okay, that's the way it's going to be. And there's going to be no effects, really. There's a little, little tiny bit in the ends of things. But for the most part, I did it like a dry vocal. So you, you can kind of, you know, when you put a little reverb on it, you can 
mask the like you know when you go yes. or i'm sorry i can't even do it but like you know when you hit a note uh with a little reverb on it it kind of masks all those nooks and crannies and cracks and bubbles and spit takes and all that stuff right smooths it out a bit smooths it out a little bit and uh that's not the way it is on the new record i mean even good luck trying or like be so fine if you were mine and it's like bah, and then all this stuff and anyway well i when i was listening to it i could hear this more bluesy vibe yeah. on, and, on these and songs very so. dry very mm -hmm. like um oh you know uh, did Eric just wake up? Anyway, um, we were on the road in Asia. I don't know. I think we did it. So this is our second USA tour. So we did um, uh, East Coast. And I think we played a little Texas in there somewhere. But then in November, me and uh, Paul and I had been writing. And we asked the other guys that they you know, participate. Uh, Nick did write a few things and it just didn't make the cut. And Billy, I guess, didn't have that much time. He did, uh, he, I, he wrote one or two things, but me and Paul got together. I live in San Francisco, Paul lives in Portland. So every week for about three weeks, I got together with Paul and stayed at a little uh, Airbnb right around the corner from his house. Went, you know, his wife, Emmy would make me like tea in the morning and a little breakfast and and I'd say hello to Marlon, his son. And then we'd go downstairs in the studio and write from scratch. Oh, wow. You know, and, I, and I said, I go, you know, man, do you got any? And I write music as well. I write a lot of, lot of rock and roll music, but obviously Paul writes the majority of that. And I go, have you got an addict at Rush or have you got a daddy brother here somewhere? And he goes, Nope, not yet. We're just writing from scratch. And, and it was like a a writer's workshop every day wow. for three weeks. We just wrote. And uh and then he had he when I left for the to go home on the weekend, he wrote Good Luck Trying. And I came back, we wrote a couple more things, and I went back home again. Then he wrote Up on You, which is very like start me up, kind of rolling stones, you know, be you don't fan. <laughs> and cool kind of harmonies and everything. Anyway, that's how we did it. And then um, we made uh, demos. Paul plays drums too. He was, he's freaking a, a great drummer. He played bass, guitar, a couple of little solos, and then he played drums on it. And I, I sang all the vocals. So we did like all 10 or 11, 12 tracks. And then I, I had to go to um, Japan to do a solo project, something called Mr. Vocalist. I'll tell you about that later. Anyway, it very um, Michael Bublé kind of thing. I have, I have, I have other sides to me, mm -hmm. but I did something like that in Japan for about five shows, and those guys went into the studio and cut all the the record basic tracks without me, but. I had, I was on the demos and I had, you know, when you do those guide vocals and you make demos for your band and you can't be there, which kind of bummed me out because I really, I've never not been there. Um, it just shows the rest of the guys in the group, don't step on me, you know, don't, <laughs> don't make a lick, right? When I'm going, when I'm trying to sing a crucial lyric that is so important. Anyway, um, and then when I got back, they were done. And then I got back in, um, so I was. It, I went to Japan in December and I got back on the 23rd. So shortly after Christmas, I flew to LA and got together with Jay Rustin, producer, and sung the, the whole record in about eight days. And then two days later, I was in Texas. That's right. Anyway. And so, so maybe yeah. with the tech nowadays, you don't need to be in the same room. You don't need to, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, but I really wanted to be there. But you know, I can't understand I've, it. Yeah. I, I said this before, Larry, and I know if you, I feel funny saying it, but I saw this Instagram picture of Nick, Billy, and Paul cutting uh, "Good Luck Trying," right? And they were so happy. You know why? Because I wasn't there. Oh come on! No, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. If I was there, I'd be like, no, 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 no. This is the way. 
you know, as a writer, I look, when you're in a band, you bring a song in and if it's really, really good to you uh, and it feels finished, you want to keep the integrity of the song and you don't want like everybody to mess with it. You know, they, you, everybody has to put themselves in your song. Mm -hmm. Same thing like when Paul writes a, like he wrote Green Tinted 60s Mime and he, he had a demo singer sing it, um, the song. And, and he goes, okay, now Martinize it. And I go, okay, that's what we call it. Like, like the cleaning thing, you know, and <laughs> Eric Martin, I know. So uh, he goes, Martinize it. And I go, well, do you want me to Martinize it? Or do you want me to stay true to your song and the melody? And he goes, stay true to my song in the melody. So that's exactly what I did. I mean, I sang exactly with the demo singer through Paul, you know, vicariously through Paul. And then I added a little thing and anyway, but that was my job to do that in a band. So when you do that, you bring a song in and you feel like it's your a finished piece, you try to keep it so it's exactly how you intended. But then there are songs, like the majority of songs when you're in a band, you know, I bring I bring a, a song in, I, then I write it on acoustic, say, like a little piece of um, take cover, well, one of our songs from the past, and I brought it into Paul and Paul goes, and Paul makes it into this like, epic thing you know then that's where you know, i'm giving your folks at home a, a learning lesson about yes you are this is awesome being in a rock and roll band <laughs> <laughs> well those these are the trials and tribulations you have to deal with you know and it's and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad but it it is a process and it's uh it always ends up great yeah you know it all for with with us and mr big i mean just recently I mean, I saved them in a file, but I kept all these demos from the past. And and the, and the records have already been out. And I listened to the demos the other day, and I'm like, God, you know, most of the demos, some of the demos are pretty good, that as is. Mm -hmm. And then on the record, they came out as is, like To Be With You or a song called Promise of the Moon or a few of my, you know, my ballads. Um it came out just like I intended it to. But then some of the demos are like, oh man, this demo sucks. We made, <laughs> we made, you know, we made a beautiful island and this is a crappy little piece of land here. So it's, so, it's where it started though. Yeah, it's where it started. But I mean, I, I, I see where having, uh, especially my band, super talented, um, musicians writers and and singers too god man i got i really lucked out there i mean it's not my band but it is my band because no one else is around here <laughs> um, <laughs> um but yeah they they i'm gonna miss that i'm gonna miss that so when it's over and done and uh that's all she wrote on august 23rd god hopefully we do something else not a not Met, not crazy tours. I don't want to do that anymore, but some one-offs or whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, what I'm going to miss the band. Big what time. is going on with the band? I've heard, I've, I've read different things. I've seen different things and sometimes they kind of, they're opposite. What's going on? Well, you've seen the poster probably, or you've seen, you know, okay. You look up Mr. Big and it says, Mr. Big, big finish tour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't mean that we're playing in Finland, Larry. Okay, yes. it, means, <laughs> it means that we're big Finnish, man. Yeah. Damn it. Damn but, it. but then I've heard that it may not be the over, over. Well, that's what, that, who says that? Molly Crew and Kiss fans? Come on now. No, no true. It's, it's supposed to, yeah, it's <laughs> it's over. I mean, we've all decided, and we're not bitter about it. I'm... I'm I'm sad about it though because we're tighter than we've ever been. We are not parting ways in some kind of secret I hate you pact, you know. It's, mm -hmm. We there's a there's a lot of love in the room. Good. But he's playing great. We're tight. We're actually too tight. You know, um I said the other day to the guys Hey, I really want to put good luck trying and 
up on you from the 10 album in the set. And they're like, oh, we have to learn more stuff. We are already playing 23 songs. And we're like, yeah, every night, the same thing. And he goes, yeah, well, we're tight, right? And I go, yeah, but it's starting to feel like a job, man. I'm, Come on, can't we go out and have an, and the, but there's something to be said with that because everybody wants that perfect, or everybody wants that show, the mm -hmm. entire Lean Into It album. And then we play all the, all this and, ballads and humor and we do we've been doing this thing that we we started out doing it in japan it's called the switcheroo and we um it's like 22 songs into the set um billy gives me his bass i play the bass paul plays the drums nick plays guitar and he's really good at it way better than i am on bass and um billy sings we do that. Good luck. Da, 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 da. Good luck. Can't remember who that's by. Rascals. Young Rascals, maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's that's a lot of fun. But yeah. So anyway, back to what you were saying. Uh, it's over after okay. August twenty third, and hopefully, hopefully, we tack on a few shows over the years and stuff like that, but there won't be any more touring. There won't be go, there, we won't be doing tour. We're, you know, we're going to Europe on um, July 10th. Album comes out July 12th. Just thought I'd throw that out there again. <laughs> Folks, I, I don't know, I, God, does anybody, I hope you, I hope you buy it, download it or whatever, do it, but it's pretty good. It's more mellow. Like I said, it's more, more mellower than, being into it or bump ahead or hey man or what if but um there's a lot of cool collection of rock and roll on it and uh, and it's from scratch and it's just so um i really enjoyed the process of writing it you know over the years paul gilbert is pretty he's a you know he's a boy genius um and i don't mean that on a like in a negative nerdy way or anything. He's just really a smart guy, but he's very shy or maybe he just doesn't talk to me that much on, on the road. Um, you know, kind of hang with Billy. We have a, a fondness for the red and, um, and Nick's fun to hang out with too, but Paul, you know, he's a pretty quiet guy. So when I went to Portland in November and this is like 30 plus years and I never really, we, 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 we had a really great connection. And I'm starting to stutter now, right? Um, we had a really great connection. And it was, we talked more than we've talked in 35 years, I think. Wow. And, and I like what we came up with. And uh, I'd love to have had like some like, I'll be your daddy, your brother. But even Paul, he's like, well, they can listen to the other records, you know? Um, if, if it's the last one, okay, everybody said, okay, well, not everybody. I did this interview uh, a few months back with a, in England, follow me now, with a Japanese uh, journalist. And he's interviewing me, but Billy's in the room too. And I, I think he was asking a few questions to Billy. And he goes, Eric, Eric Son, is this your last record? And I go, God, I hope not, man. I, I'd sure like to make some records in the, in the future. And I go, Billy? And Billy goes, it's it. Final record's over, <laughs> right? So we're not on the same page as far as, I mean, like, I I hope there's a little future for Mr. Big as far as making a record here or there or doing, God, what if, is so, what if somebody asked us to do a residency in Vegas or mm -hmm. in Europe or, or even Asia or something like that? I wouldn't turn that down for anything. I, I love being in Mr. Big. I just don't, I just don't want to do those. We've been on a tour for a year now and I've had, I've had a couple ups and downs vocally. Uh, just a couple. I mean, shit, sorry. 80 shows so far. I've had like a, two or three mistakes, but, um, but it just goes, to show, it's not just me, but I, I don't want to tour this kind of long anymore. I, I, understand. I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to. I think I think I'm not trying to like pat myself on the back or anything. I Billy, I I still have 
some um, entertainment left in me. I'm not retiring, but I've entertained the masses and I and I I've given them the best I've got. Some places probably probably think, well, you kind of shit the bed on that one gig. Anyway, I hope not. I think for the most part, I kicked ass all over the world and I'm proud of the what I did and what I'm proud of what I did for the last 35 years. So uh calling it quits with Mr. Big. I'm okay with it. But if we do do a couple little shows here and there, I won't say no to it, you know. So if somebody wants to follow the band, is it mrbig.com or can they Mr. Big site is uh it has all the dates on it. What's okay. left of the dates is like 25, 26 more shows. And is there anything if somebody wants to follow you, Eric? Uh I have Facebook okay. um just official Eric Martin page right now on the cover of it is uh, a mic uh, a microphone with me not standing in front of it and just a, an, an empty audience saying that I've gone fishing, saying that this is my vacation, you know, and there's a lot of fake things out there, but yeah. you can, you can tell it's me, the, you know, the way I talk or the way I talk too much or the way I write, I, 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 somebody just pointed out some fake, why pick on me? Why, yeah. you know, John Bon Jovi, why, do, why are you picking on me? Why are you making me like, like, why are there fake Eric Martin pages? It makes no sense. Yeah. Look for the blue check mark for sure. What? Look for the blue check mark for yeah. sure. Yeah. If I even have that shit, I hope I have it. I have somebody running my page. Okay. Eric, uh, thank you. And I, and I do have Instagram. Uh, I am Eric Martin like that i am eric martin perfect so please check that out eric i appreciate you taking time i know you're on vacation hold on a second after we've done the interview i go on one more thing from you real quick but again thank you so much i'm looking forward to hearing the whole album when it comes out uh on july 12th which is just a few days away and uh looking forward to it man and uh thank you again i appreciate you taking the time larry mac look like you're coming back all right yeah hey, i love that <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. Hey, we'll do a jingle. All right, Larry, thanks a lot. And I know we're going to have a little chat after this, but I salute you. Mr. Big. All right.